What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another weekly update. So there's a lot of news stories to go over here this week, like a lot. So part of that is because the uh, Consumer Electronics Show, the virtual version was going on this week. So lots of new tech from companies and everyone's showing off their new electric stuff. Uh, but then there's also a lot of interesting uh, new gas and performance uh, vehicles that also we have some news on this week. So buckle up here, it's gonna be a long one. So first up, we have uh, some images here. They're patent images, but we have images here of the production version of the new Nissan 400 Z or whatever they end up calling it. So these images were discovered by Car Expert, um, and so they uh, were perusing through the Australian uh, Intellectual Property Office and their patents that were just filed. And um, so that's how they found these images here. And thankfully it looks identical to the concept. Uh, there's very minor little changes here, only like basically the necessary changes you have to make for a production car. Um, that's basically what they made. So you see there's side reflectors there on the back bumper. Um, there's a keyhole in the rear deck, which is kind of strange. Um, to have a keyhole anymore, you know, because I think most of these uh, cars just have key fobs. So maybe this suggests you'll be able to get an actual key to, you know, twist in an ignition and open and unlock a trunk. It's kind of strange they even included that, but, uh, you know, maybe the base model will have that or something. We'll have to see. Um, they also added a radar sensor in the grill there that looks pretty pronounced from the patent image there, but I'm sure that that'll blend in a little bit better uh, on the production version. It won't stand out quite that much, hopefully, because that does really distract uh, on that front end image there. So hopefully, you know, it's a little more subtle. But other than that, I mean, it looks identical to the uh, concept, and that is refreshing for one and very exciting because I think it's a beautiful looking car and I'm excited to see it actually hit the roads like that. And so the rumors are now saying it's not going to go into production though until 2022. And um, the reason why they're saying that is because the GTR Proto took two years from that debut in 2015 or sorry, 2005 until 2007, whenever that car actually went on sale with the R35 GTR. So that's why they're saying that, um, you know, so that's a conservative estimate. I think, you know, if you're seeing patent images now, you could potentially see the car sometime this year, you know? I feel like patent images wouldn't be filed unless it was fairly close to being revealed. Maybe it just won't go into production until 2022. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, exciting to see that and see that it will actually look that gorgeous. That's awesome. Another exciting story here this week uh, is that the new Ford Raptor has just been spied. And now I can't show you the images, um, but uh, I will link them below if you want to check them out. It also includes a video where you can hear it. The big news here, the reason why I'm even talking about it is because uh, in the video you can hear a V8 rumble. So that is, I mean, because as far as the looks go, it's basically the same Raptor styling, except with the new F-150 design changes, you know, so there's really nothing to report there. It's just, um, you know, the fact that it will have a V8 that's been rumored for years now, but that now has been confirmed, um, you know, that they are going to do that. There still isn't clarity as far as, you know, the rumor is that it's going to be a limited edition model. I think Car and Driver even called it the Raptor R. Um, but it'll be a very limited thing and very hard to get. I hope that that's not the case and they make it, you know, widely available. And it would be nice, honestly, to even do, um, you know, like you could have the regular Raptor engine, but even just to do a bumped up version of the V8, maybe put the Mustangs tune of that V8 in, um, you know, an F-150 Raptor. So have the off-roading stuff, but give someone a naturally aspirated V8 if they don't want the twin turbo V6 of the regular Raptors. We'll have to wait and see what they do with all that. But anyway, it does sound like a, you know, V8 at least. You can't hear any supercharger, but then again, you can't hear a supercharger whine in the GT500 either, even when you're at full throttle, which is kind of a bummer. But so, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what kind of V8 is, but, you know, most likely it will be that Shelby GT500 motor. And the drive also claims um, that they think power is going to come in somewhere in the 725 to 750 horsepower range. So that is less than what the GT500 does, but that's just because the intake system will most likely be different um, to cope with off-roading. So they're going to have to dial back the tune a little bit. Same thing, uh, you know, is going with the Ram T-Rex, where that has a little less horsepower than the other Hellcats for that reason. So, you know, it still should be awesome in a truck to have that. And uh, so, like I said, hopefully they just make a decent amount of them. That is all I'm asking. Other than that, uh, I think it's going to be great. There's a couple other Ford truck stories here. So the first news here is there is a leaked photo that uh, came out this past week here about the uh, Maverick pickup. This is supposedly the Maverick on the production line. Whether this is a pre-production version or what, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's totally complete because the headlights are like missing pieces and the grill seems a little unfinished and stuff. So 
you know, don't think this is like the final design or anything, but this was posted on the mavericktruckclub.com, by the way, and so you can go on there to see a higher res version of it. But uh, it's clearly, um, you know, just showing that it's going to be fairly big. And honestly, I have maybe it's just the picture's a little deceiving, but it actually just looks almost the same size as like a Ranger. And the new Ranger was rumored to have styling like this as well, because that also, um, there was some images that leaked out at least a year or so ago, um, showing supposedly the final Ranger design. Um, and so, I don't know, you know, but it seems like the, uh, the website owners are confident this is the Maverick that we're looking at here. Um, but anyway, it is uh, very telling for a lot of other reasons. First off, there is no Bronco across the front, so this will not be part of the Bronco branding you know like the bronco sport is there's also rumors that it would basically just be a bronco sport with a truck bed as you can see it is not sharing anything styling wise with the bronco sport or the regular bronco so um they will be sharing a platform though so that's pretty much confirmed it's going to have the same kind of platform as the bronco sport most likely which is adapted from the ford escape so that means we're still going to be dealing with a front wheel drive based unibody pickup truck um, that will most likely have all-wheel drive as an option but it'll be the same kind of all-wheel drive you get in the bronco sport at best um, and uh, there's even some debate as to whether we'll even offer an all-wheel drive version of this uh, but it seems like you know they probably will but they do want to keep costs really low there's an original there was an original rumored pricing that would start under 20 grand, which is really a stretch, especially if it's a vehicle this big. We'll have to see on all that, you know, but if they do want to keep it cheap and, you know, um, very affordable for people, then you're going to see probably the low base engine you get in the Escape. Front wheel drive, all that kind of stuff is about all you're going to get, at least in that lower version. Anyway, yeah, we'll judge, uh, you know, the styling and the packaging and all that kind of stuff once it actually is finally officially here. In the meantime, it still is, you know, very hard to judge and, uh, you know, the speculation could be anything. So we'll have to wait and see on all that. Um, but it does seem like, you know, if this is the Maverick, it will resemble a Ranger whole lot considering what we know about the next gen ranger so there'll be some family resemblances there which will be interesting but yeah because it's cool to hear that um last little bit of ford truck speculation here is that there's a new video about the bronco that was posted by ford and in it they show a storyboard um that reveals sketches of a pickup truck version of the bronco and um you know there's been talk ever since we knew the Bronco was coming, that they would probably do a truck version. And especially whenever Jeep did the Gladiator, it was like, yeah, they're going to have to do a truck version. And uh, this basically guarantees it. I mean, not that this is like a dead giveaway or anything, uh, but Ford does like teasing out stuff like this. Um, you know, they did the same exact thing basically whenever, that's how we got the first look at the Bullet Mustang and confirmed that that was happening back in 2017 was there was a storyboard kind of thing and there was images pinned to a board in the background of a uh, vi video actually with the rock that Ford posted and that was like the first glimpse of the Bullet Mustang. And so now, you know, I think they're kind of doing that in the same way here with this Bronco truck. And uh, so, yeah, I'm sure we'll probably see that. It just makes too much sense to you know, do to not do it. I mean, they, they have to do a Bronco truck. It's just going to sell like crazy, especially with how hot the regular Bronco is. They're going to try and come up with a million different variations of this thing, I'm sure, to maximize their profit on these things. So um, I think it makes a lot of sense, and I'm sure you'll see that here in the next year or two. But interesting to see that little teaser there. Now onto some official news here this week, though. Hyundai revealed a few teaser images here of the Ionic 5 that's coming for the 2022 model year. It's actually gonna be revealed um, in February. So amazingly, it actually looks almost identical to the awesome retro concept from 2019. And so it's gonna be the first vehicle on Hyundai's new electric platform, and it'll be the first vehicle for the Ionic sub-brand as well. They didn't provide any other details aside from that it can get 60 miles of range in 50 minutes, uh, that it can power electronics. There's a bunch of little promo videos of it like powering microwaves and all kinds of other stuff. So um, it'll have that. And they also just said it'll debut in February. So um, I'm personally really excited about this because you know this is kind of like the Honda E that Honda won't give us. And I know I say this a lot in the weekly updates, but I would have loved to see the Honda E here in the States. And this is like the same thing. It's a cool 80s retro looking little hatchback um, that's actually gonna probably be better mechanically than the Honda E because there's you know, talks it could be all wheel drive potentially and could have you know a lot more power than the Honda E and also probably double the range of what the Honda E does. So much more suited for American tastes as well, which means it should sell better. Um, but you still get the awesome retro styling and stuff. I'm really excited for this, and uh, I I'm, I can't wait to see this thing revealed in February and hear all the details and stuff, and hopefully review one uh, down the road. That's I'm pretty excited for these things. It's so cool they're being so bold with the styling. I did not expect it to look that much like the concept. That is a pleasant surprise in my mind. Um, so anyway, yeah, interesting to see that. And it sounds like it will actually come to the states as well because Hyundai. 
Um, usually whenever there's a news story that doesn't apply to Hyundai America, they don't share it on the Hyundai uh, North American uh, press site, but this was shared on their media site. So that makes me think if they're promoting it, you know, with American journalists, then they're most likely going to be selling it to Americans. So fingers crossed for that, but hopefully we do get it. Other Hyundai news, though, is this week they revealed a few more details about the Kona N that they started teasing around Christmas time. So um, they confirmed it's going to be running a 2-liter turbocharged engine, which means it's most likely going to be the same power as the Veloster N. There were some rumors it would run the 2.5-liter motor from the Sonata N line and stuff. That's not the case here. It's going to be the Veloster motor. They say it's going to have an 8-speed uh, DCT. They say an 8-speed DCT is available, but they don't say anything about a manual. And if they were going to offer a manual, I think that they would probably publicize that. Now, you know, this also was a global uh, debut with, uh, you know, these uh, teaser images here. And in Europe, the Kona is available with a manual. But here in the States, it isn't. But theoretically, the packaging and stuff could work for a manual. And maybe they'll surprise us with, with it last minute, but I wouldn't hold my breath for that. I think it's most likely just going to be the dual clutch, um, which is fine. They say um, it's going to have uh, launch control, and they even say it's going to have an emotional sound experience. So hopefully it sounds just as awesome as the Veloster N, which uh, should be great. And we're going to have more info on that here in the coming weeks as well. So exciting to see that. Another awesome retro hatchback that actually just debuted this week was the Renault 5 prototype. Now, Renault is not here in the States, so unfortunately we will not be getting this vehicle in the States. And this is just a prototype, but they do plan to build this as a new city car and you know have the retro looks and stuff, which is awesome. And so it's inspired by the original 5 from the 70s that was available here briefly as the Le Car. Um, and so maybe some of my older fans will remember that. But uh, so yeah, it sounds like they're, they are going to build this for Europe though, and we'll with the Honda E, the Fiat 500, you know, those like smaller city cars, the electric versions. And Renault also plans to release seven new electric vehicles by 2025 uh, for Europe. So lots of good stuff coming in the pipeline from them. And they're, it sounds like they're going to go for more retro stuff in the future with their other models as well. So uh, cool to see that. Another cool electric car that we probably won't be getting is a new sports car that Lotus and Alpine are uh, partnering up to possibly make. So they say this partnership is in the very early stages and development work hasn't even started yet. Um, but the idea is to make a relatively light electric sports car. Um, and the Alpine version would be the successor to the A110. So that gives you an idea of the kind of sizing and stuff they're probably going for. Alpine also teased uh, the front end and what it could look like alongside an SUV and a hatchback they're also planning to make in the coming years. Um, and so, uh, and since Lotus it does have a dealer network here. There's a potential that we could get the Lotus version here, um, you know, but we wouldn't get the Alpine version. Um, and so we'll have to wait and see. And also that Alpine hatchback that was teased in that image as well is most likely a, a different version of that Renault 5 prototype since the Alpine and Renault are uh, under the same company. You know, that could be uh, what they're going to go for with that. So that could be pretty awesome if Alpine gets their own little retro uh, hatchback and then you have this cool uh, sports car and also an SUV, of course. Um, sounds like, you know, some cool plans there. I'm really digging all these retro electric things. I don't know. I mean, I'm a sucker for retro stuff, uh, but I just think that's going to be a really fun way to introduce electric cars and really fits in with the whole like 80s kind of high tech vibe and stuff, I think as well. So I'm excited for all that. And uh, prepare yourself, lots of other electric news here. I'm just getting started here with the CES news from this past week. So car companies, you know, they love showing off their new EVs, their new technology and all that kind of stuff and some really outlandish ideas as well. So I already covered a few in the in last week's update. So, you know, Mercedes has their new hyperscreen and stuff. You can go watch last week's video for all that. Um, but this week, uh, the biggest automaker splash came from General Motors, I think. So lots of stuff. First, the biggest thing, I think arguably, um, is that, that they actually debuted their first new logo for General Motors since the 1960s. It's always been the blue background with the silver lettering there uh, for the GM badge. No more. So now it's lowercase letters, um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's supposed to be the white space here for the M. It's supposed to kind of look like a plug because, again, they are going 100% in on this fully electric thing, and um, yeah, they're actually changing their logo to state just how strongly they feel about this. And so their uh, chief uh, global uh, marketing officer said, there are moments in history when everything changes, inflection points. We believe such a point is upon us for the mass adoption of electric vehicles. Unlike ever before, we have the solutions, capability, technology, and scale to put everyone in an EV. Our new brand identity and campaign are designed to reflect this. So, um, 
you know, we'll have to see. I still feel like, you know, unless you can have them recharge as fast as gas vehicles, there's still going to be a limit to how much demand you have for EVs. It's just, it's just the way it is. Um, you know, America is too large of a country to, you know, just have, you know, everything take forever to recharge and stuff. It's just, you have to have that mobility. And I know that you can rent cars. You know, I think that's the ideal thing is, you know, you have an electric car for your normal commute stuff. And then you have, you just rent a gas car whenever you need to drive across the country since no one hardly ever does that. Same thing, like you don't buy a pickup truck just to move a mattress once in your life. Like you rent a truck and then you drive a normal vehicle, you know, the rest of your life instead. So that, you know, but anyway, their, um, their thing that everyone's, you know, can go for EVs here. So we'll have to wait and see on all that. But um, even for those rental cars, though, something, someone's going to have to build a gas car um, to get people across the country until this stuff gets better. But anyway, um, so going along with all this EV stuff, they teased a whole group of their future EVs. Um, one teaser video shows a silhouette of something um, that looks like a Camaro on this electric platform. And this is the second time they've shown off that silhouette when they're talking about this Ultium platform. Um, and so to me, that makes me think they're getting more and more serious about teasing this Camaro idea, because with that, it was only one of two silhouettes they had for that platform in that little teaser. I, I think they're slowly trying to expose people to the idea of an electric Camaro and see if you know they get a ton of backlash over it. Uh, but I think if the Camaro does survive 100%, that's what they're going to do, in my opinion. But anyway, beyond that, the video also uh, briefly shows other models they're teasing. And so there's just this one shot, basically, where you can see most of them. And so obviously the Hummer is the one in the middle. Uh, the Lyric is on the one side there. And then you have the new Celestic on the other side. And I'll get uh, more info on that here in a minute. But behind that, you can see the, there's a futuristic Chevy truck and an SUV, along with something wilder in the back right corner there. And then what kind of looks like a sporty coupe in the back left corner. I could be wrong. Uh, maybe it's a little too high. We'll have to see, but maybe that's a early teaser for an electric Camaro. I have no clue. But anyway, interesting to speculate. And hopefully we get, you know, more um, details on all those here in the not too distant future. But back to the Celestic. Uh, Cadillac did give us a bunch of info on that. And they say it will be their ultra luxury flagship sedan with handcrafted materials, a pillar to pillar infotainment system, uh, along with a all wheel drive system and four wheel steering. It's also going, going to have this, uh, what they're calling a four quadrant suspended particle device smart glass and it's this roof um, that allows the occupants to set their own level of roof transparency it seems like it could also be illuminated it's, it seems very high-tech pretty sweet stuff um, can't wait to see the whole thing of course um, it looks like the lighting and stuff in the exterior you can't see much of the exterior but it looks like taillights will be pretty similar to the lyric and stuff so we'll have to wait and see on all of that um, and it's gonna be a while for the Celestic because it sounds like the lyric won't be starting production until 2022 and in previous reports about the Celestic flagship sedan, there was talk that it would be over $200,000. Like when we're talking flagship, we're talking like exotic car money. Um, so hopefully it actually lives up to that. We'll just see on all that kind of stuff. Uh, but with, you know, car prices ballooning these days and, you know, Escalade's already being a hundred grand, basically. I don't think, you know, 200 grand is insanely wild if they actually do have some really crazy technology that would be expensive, like that roof, which I'm sure is probably 30 grand on its own or something. So let's wait and see on all that, but very intriguing. Um, and that wasn't it for all the Cadillac stuff, but this other stuff kind of uh, jumps the shark a little bit. So they ventured into the far-fetched world of autonomous pods and manned drones, like everyone else loves to do at CES. Everyone talks about these, you know, flying taxis and all that kind of stuff. And Cadillac just decided to kind of do the same thing, but then put their own design spin on it. I don't think they're actually even developing this stuff, but it's kind of cool nonetheless. Uh, so the uh, flying one's called the VTOL, which is um, a concept meant to allow people to go from one rooftop to another in busy cities. Um, that sounds like a, a fun uh, conundrum to have. Like, oh, I'm going to hop in my flying drone and go to the other rooftop over there. And anyway, the PAV, or the Personal Autonomous Vehicle, um, is Cadillac's take on the Autonomous People Mover thing. Um, that everyone thinks we're going to have someday. It seems like, you know, there's dozens of these things that various companies put out every single year. This one looks very lounge-like and comfortable there with the bench seats and stuff. So um, that's Cadillac's take on that, but um, we'll have to see if any of that kind of stuff ever comes to fruition, but interesting nonetheless. The last little bit of GM news, though, is something we'll actually see very soon, and that is this new delivery truck. <laughs> Much more, uh, you know, realistic here. So it launches GM's new commercial sub-brand, which is also totally new. It's called Bright Drop. And so it's not just um, vehicle manufacturing, but they also are manufacturing other logistics 
type solutions. They're not a logistics company. It's just you know producing hardware for those companies. Um, but Brightdrop will handle all the uh, commercial EVs for General Motors. And so this is the EV600 delivery van. Uh, it also uses the Ultium battery platform and can do 250 miles on a charge and supports level two charging and DC fast charging. And they say that FedEx will be the first customer to use them and they'll actually be starting to hit the roads before the end of this year in 2021. So um, coming very quickly, which I think actually will be the first application of the Ultimum battery pack, unless the Hummer barely beats it to the punch, but they're gonna be kind of neck and neck. Um, so you might actually be getting your um, your packages delivered on an Ultium vehicle before you actually see any consumer Ultium vehicles, which is kind of interesting. But um, yeah, so I think that's uh, good. You know, it's you know very similar to the Rivion. Um, you know, they have their, it's a little bit of a friendlier looking front end on theirs, but their uh, delivery vehicle, which Amazon's going to be rolling out. I think they're going to have a bunch of those here by uh, sometime this year. So uh, get ready here. This is the year you're going to have electric uh, delivery trucks for all your packages, which is crazy. Um, Another thing here, Sony gave a quick update on their Vision S car, which I'm sure many of you remember me uh, ranting about in the past. And so they say that it's now doing public road testing in Europe, um, which they did claim it was going to do road testing here before the end of 2020. And they said December is when they started road testing this in Europe. So there's a, a whole long video about all the development they're doing on developing the seats, developing the infotainment, the driving dynamics, everything like this is a full-blown car development but yet uh, sony still claims um, they have no plans to build it that it's just like to explore the components that they can sell to other companies and stuff there's no way there is no way that any accountant would approve a multi-million maybe even billion dollar project to build a car from a company that's never built a car before have hire on all the people to do this, the, you know, this infrastructure, everything else, and then do nothing with it. Why would you start a project and have it go to a dead end whenever you're putting this much time and money into it? This car is going to be something, whether Sony buys, you know, sells it to people or if they sell it to another company that wants to get into the EV world quick. Um, I have no clue, but I think it looks great. It seems really cool, and I hope that somebody ends up selling this car because it'd be a complete waste of time if all this work went into this thing and they never do anything with it. So we'll have to wait and see on all that. But the other big tech company that is working on electric cars is Apple, and we've heard about this in the past, and I previously talked about this in a past weekly update as well, that they're planning to make a car by 2024 is the target currently. And so the new news this week, though, about the Apple car comes from the Korea Economic Daily that reported that Hyundai was in talks to build the car for Apple. And then there's been further developments that it potentially could be built in the Kia factory in Georgia. Um, but it's all still up in the air. So Hyundai officially came out and said to Reuters that Apple and Hyundai are in discussions, but they're in an early stage and nothing has been decided. And then Apple must have gotten mad because Apple likes to keep everything very secret, of course. And so Hyundai kind of back walked that a little bit. And then they, uh, instead they said um, that they were getting requests for, for cooperation on joint development of autonomous electric vehicles from various companies. So interesting they threw in the autonomous part there because I don't I didn't think that the Apple car is gonna be completely autonomous. No one's at that point yet. So I'm not sure how that's gonna work from a legal standpoint and stuff. But anyway, um, so that's what they said. And then they also told CNBC that Apple was talking with a variety of global automakers. So it's like they keep trying to back up like, no, 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 it's not us. Like, don't get mad at us. Like, you know, because I think maybe they were one of the front runners and Apple got mad about it or something. We'll have to see. But so but it also says that Apple is talking with various companies and other automakers. And I just think that Apple should just buy that Sony car. I mean, Sony's developing it. I know that they're, you know, com competitors with cell phones and stuff, but I could totally envision an Apple logo on that Sony car and it would fit in with Apple design language and stuff and, you know, just swap in the tech for, you know, Apple tech and then you're set. I think that would be totally, you know, make a lot of sense. Um, as far as who would build it, I don't know. But um, yeah, we'll have to see, you know, and it could be they have another company. There was talks in the past that I think it was actually, there was talks that maybe like FCA could do something with them. And um, honestly, I mean, even Tesla is 15 minutes away from the Tesla headquarters to the Apple headquarters there in Northern California. They're 15 minutes away from each other. It would make a lot of sense for them to work with Tesla as well. So I think there's a lot of companies still in the running 
But, um, you know, the, the current rumor is that Hyundai could be the one that gets it here with their uh, new electric platform. We'll have to see on all that, but that certainly would help Apple to speed up the process. Um, but then there's also talk about Apple having their own uh, battery development and that they d are doing their own thing. So, you know, if they're using their own battery pack, I don't know why they need to team up with anybody. They should just build a factory and build it themselves. But anyway, all interesting stuff and uh, we'll see what ha develops here in the next few years and all that. Speaking of Tesla though, they just revealed the standard range version of the Model Y finally this week. And so it makes the starting price $8,000 cheaper than before and it's about $800 cheaper than the Mustang Mach-E right now before the tax incentives that you get on the Mach-E that you don't get on the Teslas anymore. But the Tesla still is a little bit more capable. It can do 244 miles of range on a uh, charge. That's better than the 230 the Mach-E does in its base form. Um, and also this Model Y is single motor for this base model, meaning it's rear wheel drive and it will be slower. So Tesla claims a 5.3 seconds 0 to 60, which still isn't bad, but that is a half second slower than the 4.8 second uh, time of the regular dual motor long range Model Y. Um, of course, you can't get the performance version too. Um, but then Tesla also said that in addition to that, they're making the third row available finally for the uh, Model Y as an option. It's a $3,000 option in the Model Y to get that. And um, so yeah, interesting to see them add that. Uh, back to some gas cars here for the last few stories. So Porsche this past week revealed the limited edition Boxster 25. And so this celebrates 25 years of the Boxster and it's based on the GTS 4.0 version. So uh, they're starting with the best version of it here. So it gets these copper colored accents on various parts of the car, including the wheels, just like on the original Boxster concept car. It can also it be ordered in silver, white, or black with the interior and roof either in burgundy, which also pays homage to the concept or in black as well. Uh, mechanically, it's all the same and can be had with either a manual or the PDK, but it does package some of the options as standard, including the torque vectoring, the limited slip diff, um, the uh, Porsche Active Suspension Management, and the Sport Chrono package. So that's kind of, it's, this is also, this is kind of like a GTS deal where the GTS adds a bunch of stuff. So you kind of save a little bit of money over getting a non-GTS version. And so this is kind of the same deal because these are gonna be about $9,500 more expensive than a regular Boxer GTS, but that's before you add those options onto the Boxer GTS. So you're really not paying much more. And so that makes it a fairly decent value, I think. So you're gonna, they're only gonna be making 1,250 of these for the world. They didn't say how many are coming to the States, but they'll be pretty rare. So maybe they'll end up having markups and be well over that anyway. But yes, yeah, so that means that uh, these will be starting with a base price of $99,950. So hundred grand for a Boxster. It's crazy. Come, came a long way from where it was 25 years ago. Even with inflation, I feel like they've gotten a lot more expensive. But anyway, great to see that. I think it looks really cool. Interesting little story here about Kia this week. So they're going to be getting rid of about 23 years of heritage with the Sedona name um, because uh, there's new NHTSA documents here that reveal that Kia is going to be using the... Um, the name that they use for the minivans in the rest of the world, which is Carnival. Um, that's what they call their minivan in South Korea. And so this new Sedona, or what was going to be the Sedona, that's coming to the States here will now be called the Carnival. And we've already seen the design last year. They revealed it. And uh, so we're just waiting on the North American details and the official rollout here, which should happen in the next few months. Um, but yeah, so interesting to hear that. I think that I think that Carnival is a you know more fun, family-friendly name than Sedona anyway, so I think it's a good choice, um, but we'll see how consumers react to that. Um, Automotive News this week uh, interviewed the head of automotive operations for Toyota North America, and they're talking about body-on-frame off-road uh, SUVs, and they say they can see there's a clear appetite for more off-roading vehicles, especially in the Lexus brand. And the reason why they're starting to be more interested in this, uh, you know, because those are always very low volume things. They're, the GX is ancient, the LX is ancient, so is the Land Cruiser. There is talks of them doing a new Land Cruiser and, uh, you know, whether or not that comes to the States, we'll have to see. But anyway, um, so once they saw in 2020 here how the uh, Lexus uh, body on frame SUVs performed, that's what I think really encouraged them to pursue this more. So they say GX sales rose by almost 10% in 2020 when sales of everything were down in 2020, basically. And um, even the LX only dropped by about 4% in 2020, which is pretty good considering most other vehicles drop more than that. So um, on top of this, they said that seeing strong demand for the Bronco also uh, piqued their interest. Like, wow, there's a lot of people that want to spend you know, 55, 60 grand on an off-road uh, vehicle like this. And so that kind of is you know, also the same kind of pricing that Lexus kind of plays in. So 
Um, because of all this, they say they've identified a white space in Lexus that could be filled with another body on frame off-road capable SUV. And um, then also Autoblog pieced together, there was another separate interview that Automotive News did um, with the head of Lexus who mentioned uh, there's uh, been strong demand for the 4Runner and that continues to improve its demand every year, even as it continues to get old and you know ancient. Um, and so they say that that also has given them a signal that you know the 4Runner, not only is it going to you know, continue to be a very strong performer for them, but um, you know that kind of has led you know all these outlets to infer that maybe there will be a Lexus version of the 4Runner um, that would make sense. Now we're probably most likely talking about the next generation 4Runner, which shouldn't be more than a couple of years away. I doubt they would hurry up and you know do a badge job on the current old 4Runner. Although I could be wrong, they totally could. But um, I think most likely we're talking about something you know a few years out that um, you know we'll use the next generation 4Runner. And, you know, have a Lexus version, uh, something like that would make a lot of sense. And, hey, if people are buying them up and, you know, they have the profit margin there, I'm sure they'll crank out as many as they, you know, that makes sense. So interesting to hear that. And the last news story this week is something that might not be a sales success. Um, and so there's a news uh, report here uh, that Fiat is planning a new edition as well. But uh, Automotive News claims, uh, Automotive News Europe claims it's uh, going to be Fiat adding a convertible version of the 500X. So, um, you know, they had the Cabrio version of the regular little 500, um, and uh, so that's going away with that 500, which left the States here at the end of last year. And so, basically, they say, they say it's going to have the same sliding fabric roof kind of design with those rails, so you still have the pillars and everything from the coupe, but they just basically cut out the roof and then put in a sliding roof instead. It's going to have that same type of thing, supposedly, um, and they're pretty confident. They've confirmed this is going to happen, um, and they say production is even going to start this year, so this isn't something that's far off either, um, and it will obviously be with the current generation 500X. And um, whether or not it comes to the States, I don't know, but considering, I mean, Fiat is starved for new models here in the States, and they just lost um, the 500L and the 124 um, Spider here the past you know couple of weeks so especially this with the Spider you know if you can replace it with a Cabrio version of the 500X maybe that fills the void for some people going from a little Miata based Roadster to some you know large SUV that has a uh, you know some convertible stuff on it but anyway we'll have to see I mean it could be a fun option considering the only other four door convertibles you can get are the Wrangler and the Bronco um, so. You know, there could be an opportunity here, potentially. It could do better than... Because a lot of the other convertible SUVs that have failed in the past have all been two doors. So, I mean, this isn't a full-blown convertible either. So, it's kind of just like a really big moonroof um, that's, you know, just... And it's going to be easier to work than a regular convertible and stuff. So, this could actually pan out for them. We'll have to see. But I think Fiat, um, yeah, doesn't seem like their outlook is very great if this is the only new thing in the pipeline. Could be fun, but I hope that they have some more substantial um, additions here to the lineup in the next you know few years. But anyway, we'll have to wait and see if that actually happens. But interesting to hear that nonetheless. But yes, that's it for all the news this week, guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this nice long weekly update. Let me know your thoughts and everything in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you all continue to stay safe and healthy. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.